obviously getting ready for a really good Iowa team. I've, uh, you know, they got us pretty good here last year um, and uh, pl played really well uh, here. They're really uh, another elite offense, um, really talented. They run that great motion and they've got some gifted players. Brand uh, does a great job. They mix defenses. Um, and, um, you know, the metrics would certainly um, show they're, they're one of the, you know, top half teams in the Big Ten right now. Their metrics are, are really impressive, both their net and their Ken Palm. Um, and I think when I watch them on film, I think that's what I, that's what I see. So, um, terrific, uh, terrific team. Great challenge for us here tomorrow night at, uh, at 8 o'clock. So, uh, good, to, good to be back home. Hopefully people can can get here safely. Um, obviously, I know there's some concerns about weather. Hopefully, people who are planning on coming take a little extra time. And um, if they feel uh, like it's safe enough and can get here and, you know, enjoy a little beverage and hot dog or whatever it is you choose, that's uh, we're, we're glad that that's opening back up for our fans. So it'd be good to be back home, but uh, we've got a great challenge ahead of us with this Iowa team. The way they change defenses and the way that they will, will pressure you in different ways. You guys have taken care of the ball better in the last several games than you had in a while. Are you, comf or are you I guess, what's your comfort level or confidence level that that will translate into a challenge like this? Yeah, you know, it's um, it's interesting you ask that because they are number one in the league in, in turnover percentage. They turn you over more than anybody else in the league. So, right. you know, I, I don't know that it's necessarily, you know, fair for us to expect six turnover game like we had last game but I, I do think can we keep, keep that thing you know 10 or less um, and uh, I, I think that's going to be critical against them because uh, they do but I think it's the confusion sometimes with the switching defenses and they do a good job kind of camouflaging uh, whether they're in man or zone and they've obviously got great length. Does Is that a case where because you have a, a Jamari I mean are you have we've the youth in your backcourt isn't as young as it was a couple weeks ago, but yeah. does having a Jamari help you with some of your concerns about that? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, um, it does, because uh, he's pretty sure-handed with the ball, um, and um, he's, he's, he's been good with that for the most part of this year. He's not really had a whole lot of unforced turnovers. Um, yeah, I think he definitely helps, and I, I think it's going to be a good, you know, education for our young guys in terms of, in terms of learning to play against a different style. You know, just they're, they're, they're different. They run, again, they run great motion, they've got great pace, and they, they mix defenses up. Did he look like he was coming off several days out, Jamari, uh, last game? I mean, there was that specific yeah. sequence, the turnover to Kyle, I think it was, and then the fouls on the three-point shot. Yeah. Just uncharacteristic. And there were a couple, did he just look a little off after so long? I mean, I think so. He, he was, you know, he wasn't out. Um, you know, I think any time you're out for, what was he out? Probably um, about five or six days. Um, so I think any time you're out, but uh, it's tough to say. I mean, could he have those errors? Um, you know, if he had practiced, uh, maybe. Um, so I don't want to put, I don't want to put it on that. He just that was a bad sequence there. But I thought he also had some really good moments defensively in the game. And you obviously were pretty excited about getting him. Uh, Coach Pete didn't talk to him recently about. As soon as he went in the transfer portal, you guys were like, that's a guy we should go get. How much has he delivered based on your expectations now that we're pretty well into the season? Yeah, no, he's been he's been what we thought. And and if you can reflect back or remember back on that time, well, why did we get him? Because we, at that point, still anticipated Dwayne um, being in the backcourt with him. And we felt like those would be a really good complement. Um, so we've had to kind of maneuver and adjust a little bit with with that, but we felt like with kind of the the, the one, two, three of Jamari, um, uh, Dwayne, and Justice, he, he would just complement those other two guys. So obviously, it's been we've had to kind of adjust on the fly here a little bit, and it's it's worked out well. Uh, thank goodness, some some guys have really performed well. From an uh, intangible standpoint, you have a guy like Jamari, DJ, and Kyle. You said one loss can lead into another. A game like Purdue can lead into a loss against have you seen that in practice with guys letting that 24 hours pass and focusing on what's next, especially when you need that at this point in the season, going into a March when you're just getting into February? 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, in this league, I think you really have to have, um, you know, you have to have a short memory. You, you really do after, after wins and loss. You have to really focus on those things you have to get better in, try to really uh, put into practice uh, those, those areas where you have to get better in. Um, but um, if you let it, league play can really beat you up. And um, I, I think it can also, you can also get complacent, you know, so I think you have to really guard against both um, and stay focused on just the task at hand, the day in front of you as much as anything. Have you seen a concerted effort from those guys, the older guys, to make sure that the younger guys don't fall into that kind of trap? Well, you know, I, it's tough to say because, um, you know, we haven't right now. I think what you really look for is, you know, if you have stretches where you drop, you know, three out of four or three in a row or you know, four out of six, then I think, you you know, you, that's where you're, you're kind of looking at the temperature of the room and the morale of everybody. Um, you know, so we haven't really had those stretches yet. So I, I think as much as anything, guys were really disappointed. Uh, they fought hard, particularly in the last 15 minutes. Um, we learned, well, we, we, we spent a lot of time on film yesterday. Um, and, um, you know, and, and turn the page to preparing, but also getting better ourselves. This is, as much as anything, you know, about continuing to improve yourself. Uh, and yet at the same time, you know, Iowa presents a lot of challenges because they're really good. Um, and they also, their style of play presents challenges. So I think having a feel for um, uh, those things or, or, or having a um, kind of a growth mindset is really important. We saw Jamari was, you know, still in a walking boot and whatnot. Does, does he have any, you know, restrictions or limitations in practice or, you know, games with minutes, or is he pretty much all good to go? No, he's fine. He was on a, he, he would have if he played against uh, Minnesota. He would have had minutes restrictions, but not now. And then I know you uh, you acknowledged that, that Zed struggled a lot against Purdue, and, you know, a lot of that has to do with matching up with a guy like Zach Eady, of course, and that size. Um, but what would you like to see from him on Thursday to kind of let you know that he, you know, learned from that and has responded? Just greater um, effort and uh, physicality, as much as anything. I think effort and physicality. When when he's had uh, games where he's played really well, that's been um, that's been there for him. When he's had games where he's struggled, um, you know that's been the case. Where he has uh, hasn't quite been to the level it needs to be at. Hey Chris, I, I, I was just uh, I was wondering about Justin, um, kind of how he was responding to uh, not starting against Purdue, what this stretch has been like for him, and then I guess what the plan is for him over the next few, uh, or for uh, this Thursday? Oh, I mean, I, I, I don't ask guys necessarily how, how they're doing with, you know, a change in the lineup. I think um, as much as anything, guys uh, uh, have great approaches and great attitudes. They understand uh, the importance of, of being ready to play whenever your, your number's called. Justin's a phenomenal teammate. He's a phenomenal teammate. Um, he is an absolute joy to coach. He always has been. Um, he is uh, everything you'd want, um, you know, in, a, in, in the kind of person uh, you'd want to coach. Incredible teammate, um, works really hard, vocal. Uh, I think Justin just, you know, he just is once he wants to win, and obviously he wants to play well and, and shoot it better. Um, and I think in some ways he's, he's just got to – he's putting a little bit, probably a little bit too much pressure at times on himself. He's just got to cut loose and play. But, you know, no, no frustrations or complaints on my end. He handled it like you'd expect Justin to handle it, which is like an absolute pro. And obviously, like, starting lineups for you aren't, like, the biggest thing. You have guys rotating in and out playing 20 minutes no matter what. But – I'm curious, I mean, do you see that combination of Michi and uh, Jamari kind of in in, re, in in kind of the recent future? Like, is that going to be kind of the way to go along with Malachi? Or, uh, I, don't, or? I think it's fluid. Okay. Yeah, I think it'll always be fluid. You know, we can move different guys in different different spots. I mean, I, I don't think it'll be stay. I mean, Kyle could start, other guys could start at different times this year. It's hard to believe that we're at about the midpoint of the Big Ten season. You would be if you got that Nebraska game. Yeah. 
do you, in general, I guess, how do you feel about where this team is? Feel like this is kind of the time of year where roles really lock in, and you kind of have a pretty good sense of what you have. Do you do you have a feel for for where you where you are right now? Yeah, I think as much as any year that I've um, uh, any any of our, our four plus years, I think I think I'm learning more about our team with each time out than than I have, and in, in, in that we have as a coaching staff in the four plus years. And, it's probably, Adam, a byproduct of some key guys um, that we kind of thought we were going to have that we don't. They're just new guys and, and then guys growing as the season goes on. So um, I, I wouldn't, I think we've got a really good feel. I, I feel good about um, certainly some of our, um, some of our play and stretches of play. I think it's been very, very good. Um, but uh, I think we, we've got a long ways to go and a lot of improvement that needs to be made, but I'm very much still learning about this group. Well, what is that like as a coach? Can you maybe shed some light on when you're going into a season, you think you have an idea, like you mentioned Dwayne and Justice, like that impacts the, the roster building and then you get into a season and then Justice happens and you have COVID and it's just, what, as a coach, like what sort of things have you had to try to lean on to navigate? Are there books, are there people you call? Um, you know, you really lean on your staff, um, try to get their perspective because we, you know, it's very much collaborative in how we work and operate. So, um, you know, my my perspective is, is at times my perspective and sometimes it's, it can be influenced by whatever and I, I want to be able to hear a diversity of thought. Um, um, and I think early on when we, started to have, as we got closer to the season, some concerns about justice, that's when we really had to have a lot of staff meetings. Okay, what, what's our plan here? You know, what are we gonna do here? He was such an integral part of how we were planning on playing in November. Um, you go all off season and you're planning on, okay, this is a guy who you're gonna build some things around. So we had to really, and I think at that point, one of the things we decided to do is we were gonna try to invest early in, in some of our younger guys see if that could pay dividends as we move forward. And, and with, I know you said with Justice and with Seth, there's probably not an update for a little while, and you said that on your radio show. Now that we're into February, do you hit a, is there, is there potentially a point where you say, okay, now we need to talk about, do you come back as opposed to, can you come back? Well, I think that's, that's, um, that's a reality that, you know, it's not like we're coming in and having that conversation every day, but I'm sure that's something they're thinking about. It's certainly something we're thinking about um, as the, the days continue to turn. So, um, again, it's their focus, primary focus right now is on rehab and and returning. But I think certainly that's a that's a you know we've had that conversation maybe once or twice, but there's there's not really much because they're still working to return and there's still you know a lot of season left to be played. But it's certainly I'm I'm sure something thought about and we've thought about. Kind of piggybacking off that with uh, Seth and Justice, are you expecting, I mean obviously they'll be out, but are you expecting everybody else to be available for tomorrow? Yes. I mean, yeah, we haven't practiced yet today. You know, hopefully everybody's <laughs> fine. Um, but, uh, yes. And yes. Um, kind of a, you guys got to play two fantastic picks this weekend and Zach and Travion. Now you got another tough challenge with Keegan, obviously made a huge play yeah. to tie that game Ooh. up on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, how do you attack him? What are you seeing from him on film so far? He's so good. You know, he is, um, he's really an elite talent. It's fun to watch in our league. In, in some ways, uh, I say I say it's uh, it's fun at times. It's not fun when you're competing against him. But uh, our league has some tremendous NBA uh, talent this year. And uh, that's exciting for, for the Big Ten, I think, um, uh, to have that. And he's certainly one of those guys. And, you saw it. You saw it last year. You saw glimpses of it last year where you were saying, "Ooh, he's going to be really, really good, and probably um, not going to be, you know, there too long." Um, he's just that gifted, and his brother's really gifted too. Just one more thing about the the super seniors this year and all the guys that had the op opportunity to come back. How have you seen that impact the sport? I asked Fran McCaffrey about it today. He said, "Every team we play is old." Yeah. You start filling scouting report, everybody's got fifth year, sixth year guys, but yeah. how have you seen that impact the sport, maybe the quality of play? 
Um, I think it's better across the board. Uh, I think it's a little bit better across the board. Um, I think you also see uh, mid-majors are better than they've ever been because they're a little bit older. I know some mid-majors have lost guys, but the good mid-majors see either kept guys or added added guys, and it makes um, uh, makes mid-majors I think really good too. Um, um, I think it's just um, the quality of play across the boards, you know, a little, a little bit better um, than I think what it's been in years past. It's, that's my perception, but. You know, I don't, I don't watch every college basketball game, but that's my perception. It's a little bit better. Finish up with Keith. Um, Chris, in years past, you talked about load management and um, just trying to, as the tournament time approaches, just trying to keep guys healthy, especially with limiting practice time. At what point in a typical season uh, would you start to look at load management in practice? Well, um, it's a good question. Now, I've never used the term load management. I know that's uh, kind of become uh, a pretty – Used, widely used terms really in, in, uh, with the number of NBA games. Uh, I do think what you're always looking at is uh, collectively kind of the wear and tear on your guys, which is probably just another way of, of saying. I, I don't think right now it's too early in the season for us to say, hey, uh, we're going to pull back on guys' minutes. Uh, we're not going to practice hard. I mean, we're, we're, just, we're just in early February. We've got to get better. Uh, the guys individually, collectively, we have to get better. So uh, we're a long ways away from uh, tournament time. I mean, it is, you know, we have so many games left. Um, so uh, the reality is, is, is um, I think what we felt last year with the four games in four days was real in the Big Ten tournament. I don't know how to necessarily manage that as a coach other other outs you know I don't know how to control you know a kid getting a, a concussion in the midst of a, of a game so but I do think we're always mindful as we get into late February and early March you know collectively what are our guys minutes and then is there injury things where you know that could come into play and with the sort of COVID layoffs that you've had will that sort of factor into your decision on determining that um, not really, because I think, um, no, not, not really. I, it, it changed here in the short term. You know, we felt like we had to, you know, do a little more conditioning uh, in, in January than what we have had to do in the past because we, had, we were off for so long. Um, and a little bit more here in this, this last uh, nine-day layoff. But, um, you know, not really. I mean, we've, you know, listen, I, I feel good about – Just, I just think in this league, it's all about continuing to get better. And, um, you know, I think in year three, I don't know when uh, we finished nine of – one nine of 11, I felt really good about how we were playing going into the Big Ten tournament. Um, uh, year two, we struggled, but we, we really performed well in the NCAA tournament. Um, year, you know, year one, I felt like, you know, the guys were pretty fresh. Um, so I think, you know, you're always evaluating that, but we're so far away from that. We've got so much work ahead of us that uh, right now it's about getting better.